In 2000, John Fawcett's Ginger Snaps was released. It's a story about two sisters, one of whom becomes a werewolf. The film uniquely updated the werewolf mythology as a metaphor for female puberty. It's a great movie and put werewolves back in style. Miramax felt the need to compete, and Kevin Williamson was brought on board to do for monster movies what he had done for slasher films with Scream. Miramax offered Wes Craven double his pay to direct this werewolf movie called Cursed, pulling him from Pulse, a remake of a J-horror film he was set to direct. The cast of Cursed originally was Christina Ricci, Jesse Eisenberg, Skeet Ulrich, Omar Epps, Scott Foley, James Brolin, Robert Forster, Corey Feldman, Scott Bayo, Shannon Elizabeth, Mandy Moore, and Judy Greer. The initial premise was that three strangers, played by Ricci, Eisenberg, and Ulrich, were in a car accident and then attacked by a werewolf who turned them. Despite initially saying he was happy with the script, Bob Weinstein decided during production that he didn't like it and halted production about 90% of the way through in order to rework the script. Ultimately, Kirst would go through three rounds of reshoots to fix the film. The Three Strangers idea was nixed in favor of making Ricci and Eisenberg play siblings, with Ulrich playing Ricci's boyfriend who turns out to be the villain in a twist ending. Dissatisfied with the new direction of his character, Ulrich left the project and was replaced by Joshua Jackson. Mandy Moore also left and was replaced by Mia. Portia de Rossi was added as a fortune teller, and the characters played by Epps, Foley, Brolin, Forrester, and Feldman were cut entirely. Weinstein also thought the practical effects sucked, so he had them mostly replaced with CGI. And though the film was shot with the intention of being R-rated, Weinstein insisted that it get cut down to a PG-13 because he is a very stupid person. Now, I don't want you to be too shocked by this, but the resulting film is pretty fucking bad. Ricci and Eisenberg play Ellie and Jimmy, respectively, siblings who recently lost their parents. They are in a car crash with Elizabeth's character, who is attacked and killed by a werewolf. Ellie and Jimmy get turned in the process and spend the film dealing with becoming werewolves. The werewolf is revealed to be Greer's character, Joni, who is accidentally turned by Jackson's character, Jake, Ellie's boyfriend. Joni wants to kill every woman Jake has ever been involved with, including the characters played by Elizabeth and Mia, out of jealousy. Joni is defeated, but it's revealed that she didn't turn Ellie and Jimmy. Jake did. Jake turned to Ellie because that's the only way he thinks they can be together, and he just wants to kill Jimmy because Jake is the bad guy now. The two siblings kill Jake and become human again. Most of the movie's problems can be blamed on the reshoots. The plot points and motivations are muddy at best. So Joni killed Elizabeth's character, but then didn't turn Ellie and Jimmy. Jake just happened to be there and turned them. Why didn't Joni kill Ellie right then and there? Ellie kind of should be the main target since she is Jake's current girlfriend. I really don't understand her going after random flings. Joni is a terrible villain. I honestly can't believe they went with the crazy ex-girlfriend trope. It's so lame. And over this guy? These women are fighting over this guy. Really? Is it honestly worth it? I'd understand if it was like Chris Hemsworth or something, but this guy? This guy. Speaking of this guy, he is a worse villain than Joni. I kind of like the idea that he feels he can't be in a relationship with a human due to the danger, and in a moment of desperation, he turns a woman that he really cares about so that they can be together. That could have made for a decently nuanced villain, but the movie, at least as is, doesn't want to be nuanced. So Jake has to be a creep and a psycho. Because Ellie and Jimmy have to turn human at the end, Jake needs to die. But they didn't want the audience to feel bad about that, so Jake is made into a generic mustache-twirling villain so that he can be easily killed off with zero moral repercussions. Which, fine. Making Jake more sympathetic might have made for a downer ending, but it also might have been good that way. The leads are fine. They're doing their best. Ricci feels off in the beginning, but gets a lot better after becoming a werewolf. She's fun and endearing, and I particularly like her everybody's cursed line. There is a really good movie buried in this mess. I've never been a big fan of Eisenberg, and this movie doesn't really change that. He's fine. His subplot with the bully is just weird. This bully is constantly calling Jimmy gay and picking on him. 
the bowling has a girlfriend named Brooke, who Jimmy has a crush on, and she seems to hate the bully. Anytime Jimmy gets the upper hand and humiliates the bully, Brooke is always laughing. She does dump him eventually, but there are some why is she with him questions. That subplot resolves with Jimmy pointing out that the bully is obsessed with calling Jimmy gay because the bully is probably gay and projecting, which turns out to be the case, and the bully makes a move on Jimmy. I don't really know what that has to do with anything else going on other than giving Eisenberg something to do while Ricci tries to get Scott Bayo on a talk show. I don't know. On a technical level, the editing is pretty bad. There are clearly some attempts in that department to be hip that have not aged well, and it definitely feels neutered, like a TV cut. And the CGI effects suck. What little is left of the practical stuff looks pretty decent, which makes what happened even more frustrating. The one scene that really works is the parking garage kill. While it could have been bloodier, it's suspenseful and effective. Craven knows what he's doing, even with the studio producing his film does not. Made on a budget of $38 million, Cursed only grossed $29.6 million at the worldwide box office. And some reports suggest the budget could have been as high as $75 million. A lot of money was lost. The movie was also panned by critics and audiences. Craven regretted the project, especially because he did it for money and wasted a lot of time. He also felt that his decision to pull out of Pulse last minute to direct Cursed gave him a bad reputation that made it hard for him to get work. The movie is a lot like Justice League. It's not the worst movie. Every decision Weinstein forced on the movie was to make it palatable, for lack of a better term. Clear-cut, overly simplistic right and wrong, less violence, and so on. The resulting film is inoffensive, but quite boring. It has no personality or creative voice. It's fair to point out that maybe the earlier versions weren't working. The Snyder Cut isn't great, or honestly even good. But what they had before had to be better than what we got. I would love for editor Patrick Lessier and Williamson to go back and create a version of this closer to what was originally intended. Maybe there could even be a hashtag. But Wes Craven fans generally aren't bullies who throw temper tantrums when they don't get what they want.